Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. This is episode 135, and today we're going to be reviewing Venomized number 3, which just hit the stores uh, on shelves today. So if you don't want any spoilers, please you know, turn away now, go read it for yourself, and come back after you've read it. And uh, for those of you who want a chance to win a digital code, boom, right there is the digital code. Uh, first person to put that code in gets the comic book. And don't worry if you don't win, we have a lot more coming up. And in fact, speaking of more codes coming up, I got the latest issue of, uh, I got the Nativity Part 1. I got it in the mail, because as you guys know, I have a subscription to Venom Comics too. So I go buy them every week at the store. And then like two or three weeks later, that, that issue I got before comes in the mail as well. So all these extra codes, I'm going to be saving those up. And on the 150th episode, which will air in May of this show, uh, we are going to celebrate Venom's 30th anniversary. And I'll probably do something like read, you know, viewer comments or something like that, respond to comments, and then uh, give away, I think, about 30 different uh, codes for the 30th anniversary of Venom. So, uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that. So if you don't win this comic, that's okay. I'll have other copies of Venomized to give away. And I think I'll have a whole set, all one through five, that I'm going to pick one person and send to them like an email like all five codes so there's other chances to win we got a lot of stuff coming up on this channel so uh stay subscribed and you know keep watching uh today with this book i don't have a lot to say about it because just as i predicted with uh, the second comic book issue of Venomized, I knew this was going to be mostly action. I was like, you know, the way a story, the story seems to be structured with Cullen Bunn writing it and stuff and kind of based off of Venomverse, I was like, yeah, issue two and three will probably be the ones where they just go crazy with the action and they have a little bit of story in there and maybe like they wrap up things in the last couple issues. And so I was kind of right on that. In this one, uh, it, you have some learning like on both sides. You have like Venom and, and Spider-Man and the team you know, talking to anti-Venom and getting him to work with them. And so he says, all right, you know, Venom's like, if we're going to, you know, work together, you know, he looks on screen and he sees Lunella and uh, the devil dinosaur. And he's like, all right, you know, there's kids involved now. You know, Venom's kind of like, all right, I kind of didn't want this to happen. So if we're talking about the fate of the world here, we're going to need to interrogate one of these creatures, one of the poisons. So let's use anti-Venom here and let's go out and get someone. So they kind of set that up, although that doesn't pay off in this issue. Um, so I'm hoping it pays off in the next one. Uh, but the, this one, other than outside of that, and then outside of the poisons, learning about anti-venom and learning where Kid Kaiju is, because Kid Kaiju finally makes his appearance in this issue and shows up with a bunch of monsters to help the heroes uh, fighting uh, against the poisons. So uh, by doing that, he's obviously outing himself. But it was weird because like you had uh, like Nova, for example, right when he saw Kid Kaiju, he's like, "Hey, kid, like th they're they're coming after you. They want you as part of their plan. You know, uh, we got to get you out of here." And you're kind of like, "How does Nova know that?" And I'm guessing it's the symbiote knows it because the symbiotes, all the symbiotes that were taken from Clintar, they were manipulated and, and you know, like uh, tweaked a bit uh, by the poisons and, and modified uh, to be, you know, uh, not, not fear fire anymore or sound or anything like that. And they've modified them and are using them, you know, to, to place them on the heroes so that all the heroes have symbiotes. So when the poisons need to like, you know, take over, uh, they have them to take over. So the heroes are starting to figure that out. Like, oh, if we get a symbiote, that's phase one. And then phase two is they send a little poison after us and then we become a poison. And then phase three is their army's bigger and they start taking over the universe. So the heroes are starting to figure that out. And then meanwhile, the poisons are figuring out about Kid Kaiju's existence, where he is. And also that anti-venom has shown up and killed his first poison. And when he puts his hands on the poison, they melt into goo. So he's like, okay, what does this mean? Does it mean the person that was in there is no longer in there? Are all these poisons actual people or are they not? Uh, like He's trying to figure out what's going on. So that raises some questions there. Uh, and then we have like uh, the poisons uh, also like figuring out carnage. So now that they've bonded a suit with him, they now in this issue have him like, you know, he's freaking out. He's using a different symbiote, but he's like swinging it around uh, somehow like his old symbiote, which doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, to me from a continuity standpoint. You know, he's making blades and stuff and chopping up uh, 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 poisons left and right. And I'm like, yeah, the old carnage could do that because that symbiote was born on earth in a different atmosphere uh, it wasn't just like that because cletus cassidy made it that way it, it was born in a completely di a different atmosphere so it has different abilities kind of like how scream and the life foundation uh symbiotes had different abilities and toxin as well so to me that was a little weird that he was able to wield this random symbiote into whatever he wanted but then he gets hit with a poison 
and he becomes a poison. So now he's on their side. So they have one of the anomalies that they know that could hurt them. The poisons are like, all right, we have one anomaly down. We got to get Kid Kaiju and Anti-Venom now, and we got to take them off the picture. But Anti-Venom, they're like, yeah, Kid Kaiju, we could probably, you know, bring him in and turn him into a poison. And then his monster creating abilities will help us a lot. We need that ability for whatever reason. Uh, but Anti-Venom, they're like, we can't convert him. He's His touch burns us, so we have to kill him. So that's kind of their plan. So both sides kind of set up, you know, where they are. They learn enough about each other, and then they keep going back at it and going back at war. Uh, also, there's some interesting stuff that happens in this, like with uh, Thor, the mighty Thor, uh, Jane Foster. She's Thor in the comic books, or at least in this point, uh, because this takes place in the past. It shows that it's happening before her uh, untimely demise or her tragic demise uh, in uh, in uh, Mighty Thor number 705, I think. So these events of this book take place before issue 700 of Thor, so that way, uh, you know, it doesn't mess with that continuity I guess um, but either way so you have her uh, you know she is has been turned into a poison at the end of the last issue in this issue she's fighting Captain America and all the other heroes and then her hammer disappears and she's like wait where's the hammer and Captain America goes yeah you're not worthy anymore and then he like hits her with his shield uh, so them two are going at it and then what happens is because she's unworthy it takes a while for the transition to happen but she turns back into Jane Foster and like basically falls out of the armored shell of the poison so her poison self falls back and dies i guess uh, they don't really show what happens to it but it falls out of frame and she falls to the ground and she's now fully human again and she helps uh some of the other heroes that you know aren't infected yet to help get civilians off the bridge that they're fighting on so i thought that was a kind of a neat moment and it maybe gives some hope as to how we're going to be able to save some of the people that are um you know trapped in the poisons uh, speaking of uh, jean gray shows up and she's using her telepathy to talk to Scott and when she shows up on the bridge with all the heroes fighting uh, she's now a poison obviously and she has her army of uh, other poisons and X-Men character poisons that they're attacking so again mostly action in this issue not a lot of story uh, you do get to see that one more blip of Dr. Doom seeing uh, what looks like to be his mom when he looks at the queen poison and then you have uh, Thanos looking back and seeing death you still have that going on and you have the heroes learning uh, through anti-venom and through like the Alchemex company that they're like, oh, if we kill the mother of all poisons, all the other ones will go away, and some of the ones who were recently converted might convert back to human form. Uh, so it looks like they already have their MacGuffin, they already have their you know, the way out, essentially, and it was all stuff we predicted and talked about. Uh, in fact, actually, I think we talked about some of this on RNS's uh, channel, so if you haven't checked out RNS Entertainment, I'll put a link to his channel down below and a link to the video where he had me on as a guest, and we talked a lot about Venomized and the Venom comic books and the Venom world, so if you haven't checked that out yet, please do i'll put a link down below big shout out to that guy for having me on and for getting me some new subscribers thank you guys for coming over from rns's channel i hope you're liking the content and uh and yeah and I, I hope you guys are liking the series i know rns isn't a big fan of it and i know a lot of you guys other guys are just thinking it's a total dog crap mini series uh, i'll agree with you on a sense but at the same time when it comes to Colin Bunn and when it comes to like these Venom events, I'd never have high hopes. So because of that, I think my since my expectations are tempered, I, I find myself pleasantly surprised sometimes. And I also know that when it comes to writing, it, it's not easy. But it, it, what's even harder sometimes is if you have a goal of, let's say Colin Bunn is like, I want to write a popcorn flick action movie with Venom and all these other heroes and do Venomized versions of all the heroes. I just want to do that. And I want it to be like kind of lighthearted and fun and I want an art style that it's like, you know, appealing and different and not like brooding and dark, like, you know, like a lot of Venom stories can be and a lot of Venom stories should be. Uh, and definitely Ryan Stegman's going to do that coming up with Donny Cates on Venom starting in May uh, with the monthly book. And then we have that in Nativity as well with Bagley and Mike Costa. So, you know, there's there's a Venom for everyone out there. And I think that's what Colin Bunn was trying to aim for. So to actually hit the nail on the head of what you're aiming for, just like big summer blockbuster fun. Sometimes that's not easy to do. You might aim for that, but because you're a certain type of writer, it may not come across that way. So I do give credit where it's due. And I I, I would say that this, to me, is at least fun. It's like, it's entertaining. I don't, I'm not bummed out when I read it. And I think that's the big key point for me. So I know some of you guys out there are like, oh, you're just being apologetic. You're running a Venom show. No, I'm being honest. I, I think this is genuinely fun, but it doesn't mean I can't tear it apart too. But uh, I'm just not here to do that today because there's not really a ton to tear apart here. It's just big, dumb action. And so by saying that, that's what it is. Uh, so that's kind of my review. And so this issue for me, 
I think was a little bit weaker, uh, maybe a little bit stronger than issue two. Uh, if I gave issue two, like, you know, maybe like a three or something, this might get like a 3.25, just a hair better than issue two, because there was at least a little bit of story elements in it, even though I, you know, predicted all of what's going to happen um, and how the heroes are going to save the, you know, save everything. We already talked about that. So it's no, it's not surprising. It's not, uh, you know, well-crafted or well-structured, uh, structured but it is like mindless fun. And like I said, it's great for video content because the more of these Venom event series that come out, the more I have to make videos on. And that's people are like, how are you at issue or how are you at episode 135 already in just six months of doing the show? And I'm like, because of this, like stuff like this, <laughs> there hasn't been a lot of movie news, but there's been a ton of comic book stuff. So um, so yeah, that's just to explain myself a little more to you guys, uh, you know, and I, like I said, I, I know what it's like to, uh, to write comics and edit comics and I know it's not easy. So I don't like to tear people down even when they don't do a great job. Um, I don't like to tear them down cause I know how hard it is. And, uh, you know, and so for me, I always factor that in when I'm reviewing comic books. Uh, there is, there was a time where I tore stuff down and it just, it didn't make any sense because when I reread things later, I had different appreciations for them. So I'm like, yeah, now I just kind of take them for what they are. And if it's aimed for a big dumb action movie and it accomplishes that, then hey, mission successful. So you guys let me know what you think of Venomize down below. At the end of this book, it does end with Carnage, uh, now a poison, and he's ready to go get sent on all the heroes. They're specifically going to send him to capture Kid Kaiju and kill Anti-Venom. So will that happen? Won't it happen? We don't know. I'm guessing because it happens in the past. It doesn't because Anti-Venom's in Amazing Spider-Man right now fighting Carnage and saving Peter Parker's life. So, you know, I guess he's going to be okay. But either way, let me know what you guys think down below. As always, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching my channel. See you in the future. Peace.